Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to our third session of this top 10 series uh, Known as the classroom of the Sahaba You know, so where we're going through different questions that the Sahaba asked the Prophet Sallallahu And the different responses that the Prophet gave in regards to the best of different things So, Alhamdulillah, we've covered two sessions The first session we were blessed with Ustad Ubaidullah Evans' presence And we spoke about the best amal is to bring happiness to another person. Yesterday we were blessed with uh, our, our one and only Sheikh Muhammad al-Masmari and we spoke about um, the best muhajir, that, which is a muhajir who leaves those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbade them from going towards. And today we're blessed with another beautiful scholar, a friend, inshallah. So as everyone is joining, please say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And I don't know how people are still joining so late. May Allah bless you all. And um, you know, reward you all for your consistency. Uh, we had the Ramadan immersion at six, and we had the moments with the Quran at um, nine fifteen, and now we have this at twelve. Uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, we just finished Tarawih over here, so <clears throat> you know, our voices are not as clear. But inshallah, as the session um, continues, hopefully our voices will clear up a little bit. So everyone is doing well, and inshallah, Sheikh Abdullah will also be joining us in a few minutes. But mashallah, it's good to see all the names. Please let us know where you're joining from. Um, please, as you're watching, you know, share it with your family and friends so they can also benefit and take something back in these last few nights, inshallah ta'ala. So today we're blessed with um, Sheikh Naveed Aziz for all the way from the cold of Calgary and uh, Canada. Sheikh, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mufti Saab, how's it going, man? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh, is it still snowing there or is it okay? No man, it's good. Alhamdulillah. Today, we're, well, actually in Fahrenheit, I don't know what it was, but in in, in Celsius it was plus fifteen. So it was pretty good, mashallah. Man, I don't know. Americans for some reason don't know don't, don't know how to follow those metrics, right? Like <laughs> we, we left, the rest know, of the world does. Brother. The rest of the world does it. When we do miles instead of kilometers, we do um, you know Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. But Alhamdulillah, you know, it's it, it, the the last. I mean, the last few days, the weather has been. It's been that breeze, you know, at nighttime, that breeze that. That in some of that that that, that do that is uh, connected to Laytul Qadr. Alhamdulillah, we've been we've been blessed, Sheikh. How about your community? How's everything been over there? Alhamdulillah, things uh, are, have been pretty good, man. But as of recent, our numbers have skyrocketed, COVID-wise, right? So before, what happened was we were at fifteen percent capacity for our masajid, and then just today they announced that the new capacity is fifteen people. So at any given time, you're not allowed more than fifteen people. And it's always a challenge, like, you know, for Juma in particular, like how many Jumas can you physically have, right? So you only allowed like, to have 15 people? Is you only allowed to have Alberta 15 people. Or whole, the whole Canada? No, in, in Alberta, in Alberta, yeah. Like in Ontario right now, I believe the massages are closed for the most closed. part, right? They are like either closed or they are 10. Alhamdulillah, at least we have 15, right? So uh, it's oh, tough, man. man. It's really tough, subhanAllah. Well, in America, Sheikh, in some places we don't even know it's COVID. We just, we just exactly, exactly. You guys, like, you didn't care from the beginning, and even now, you know, Subhanallah, we Allah protect, protect you guys. Allah protect. And, we just I mean, we had a Allah. today of you know one of the elders in the community who also left, you know, passed away from COVID. So I mean, it's, it's still it's still affecting so many people. So may Allah Subhanahu give us the ability to take it serious and hopefully protect ourselves from any harm. I mean, uh, so no. Sheikh, you guys are not having like the full on tarawih and stuff like that, right? No, even for Taraweeh, like before the new lockdown, we were only doing four rakahs. Mm. Like we had two sessions with four rakahs. That's what we were doing. Yeah. So your community program and stuff is all online? Everything's online. Everything's online. It's like last year. It's the same. Yeah. It's pretty much the same yeah. as last year. Yeah. I'll love it easy for you guys, Sheikh. Sheikh, man, it's always a blessing to have you on, man. We had you on a Likewise. few weeks ago before, yeah. before, um, before Ramadan. Um, so what we've been doing in the last 10 nights is like pretty much eating uh, each night covering one narration uh, in which the Prophet ﷺ talks about the best of something. Yeah. Um, so today's session, inshallah, we'll be speaking about, there's one hadith, but it talks about two great things, right? Mm. The best of dhikr and the best of dua. Um, it's a very interesting narration where, you know, it, it just simplifies everything for the people. You know, rather than thinking about long narrations and long duas and long adhkar, the Prophet ﷺ tells us, أَفْضُلُ ذِكْرِ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ that's a bet that the best dhikr is la ilaha illallah and the best mm -hmm. dua is alhamdulillah so i mean understanding you know both parts of this hadith shaykh if you can just get us going and inshallah i'll chime in wherever you want me to chime in, 
<laughs> I was afraid you were gonna do this, and you're just gonna hand the mic to me, and you're like, run with it. No. <laughs> sure, how like, the, the we, good we, 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 we enjoy we enjoy you ha having you all. We miss you from Hajj, Sheikh. Now hopefully Allah we can go Allah. this year. And inshallah, I'm gonna tie this back into Hajj. I'm gonna tie this okay, back right, into Hajj. Alhamdulillah. طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. So this hadith is narrated from Jabir رضي الله عنه. It's reported in the Sunan of Imam Tirmidhi in Ibn Majah and Al Nasai uh, from the major books of the Sunan. Then you have Ibn Hibban uh, and others as well. Al Hafiz uh, Ibn Hajar Al Haytami he commented on saying that the hadith was Hassan uh, as well as uh, Imam Tirmidhi رحمه الله. And then even from um, the scholars amongst our time, they differed on the ruling on the uh, hadith itself. But the meaning of the hadith without a shadow of a doubt uh, is true. So the first part of the hadith is that the Prophet wasallam says that the best dhikr is la ilaha illallah. Mm -hmm. And when you actually look at the, the reasoning behind this, why would they say that the best dhikr is la ilaha illallah? It's very important to understand what the dhikr actually entails. So dhikr is your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. It is your consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a reminder for you mm. for your purpose of existence. So when you think of la ilaha illallah, that there is no one worthy of worship besides Allah, there is no God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you come to realize that you can't have iman without la ilaha illallah, right? There is no iman without la ilaha illallah. And that is why it is the best consciousness, it is the best reminder of your purpose of existence. Number two, <clears throat> you tie this directly in, to the verse in Surah Ibrahim, um, verse 27, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا um, How does the verse go, Shaykh? بِالْقَوْلِ ثَابِتِ بِالْقَوْلِ ثَابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes us firm with this statement, بِالْقَوْلِ ثَابِتِ In this life and in the next. And this قَوْلِ uh, الثَابِتِ is none other than لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ مُحَمَدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ so now you see that it brings certainty to your life. It brings consistency and structure to your life uh, in this life. And it also brings certainty and structure to your life in the hereafter. Now, this is very important to understand that, particularly when you tie this in to the life of the barzakh in particular, mm -hmm. when the, you are asked, man rabbuk, right? Wa, wa ma dinuk, wa man nabiyuk, all these questions, the qawla thabit, it gives that to you. So those that lived with it, those that continuously made this dhikr, they will be given that um, firmness in the, the Hayatul Barzakhiyah that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us thabat uh, at that time. Ameen. So now that's the Hayatul Barzakhiyah. In the hereafter, it is only those that said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah with certainty that will be entered into Jannah. And if any of the people of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah do enter uh, into the hellfire, may Allah protect us all, it will only be for a limited amount of time. And then even then it is hoped that through the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, it, that, that time is, is completely eliminated, or at the very least reduced to as little of a, of a time as possible. <laughs> Number three is that this statement, it, it, it rectifies you, your, your inner being. You know, you can talk about the nafs, you can talk about the ego, whatever you want to call it. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala warns us in the Qur'an, that those individuals that do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the antithesis of this, the, the inevitable reality is that you're going to take your hawa as your ilah, meaning mm. you're going to take your desires as your ilah. So either you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you're worshiping your desires. There's like no in between. No, no, and no. this statement, it brings that certainty to your life that you have a code of ethics, you have a morality, you have a, a, a way of life. Whereas if you take the statement out of your life, then, you know, you're no worse than the animals. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. There's a beautiful statement of uh, Qatada, the student of uh, Anas ibn Malik, that he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created the angels, human beings, and the animals. The angels he created with intellect, but without desire, and thus they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. They cannot disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. The animals he created with desire, but without intellect. So all they're doing is focusing on just fulfilling their desires. And human beings he created with intellect and with desire. So mm. when you use your intellects to overcome your desire, you're better than the angels. Mm. Yet if you let your desires overcome your intellect, you become worse than the animals. Huh. And that is the, the, the reality that with la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and this objective uh, code of morality and ethics, inshallah you become as close as possible to the angel. And then when you 
actually overcome your haram desires, you become better than the angels uh, in that situation. Shit, like, you know, yes. go, Shaykh, go, ahead, go ahead. No, no. I have no, a list, bro. I can keep going. So no, so I, I was just going to say, like, you know, like, the moment we think of, you know, the kalima of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, the first thing that come, like, one of the first things that come to my mind is, like, you know, you're able to identify the greatness of a blessing based upon the outcome of those that don't have it, right? So, for example, if a person doesn't have a car, okay, it's a great blessing, but they can at least walk. They can use their, they can use their, they can use a bicycle. They can get around. But if a person doesn't have this kalima, the outcome of that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if they had the entire world full of gold, like they would want to give that up just so they could receive some forgiveness and earn Allah's mercy. So us being blessed with the kalima is, you know, it, there, there's nothing else that we could ask for. Uh, we know Musa alayhi salam is a famous narration in Ibn Kathir where Musa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, you know, Ya Allah, give me something to say that I can just cling on to with something very special. Like it's just between you and I. Like it's something which is just between you and I. Like I want something very unique. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Yeah, Musa, say la ilaha illallah. You know, Allah Allah say, Allah. he's like, yeah, Allah. Like that's what everyone says. I want something different. So, yeah, Musa, that if this was low, low, not ahlul ardi, ma baina samawati wal ardi, that if this kalima was put on one side of the scale and everything else in the world was put on a different side of the scale of Musa, this would outweigh the latter. Just the kalima. You know, my father, Allah protect him, would say, when speaking about the kalima, la ilaha illallah, he would say, it's, 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 it's more than just the words, it's actually what comes behind it, right? The, the idea that, that, that not that there is no God but Allah, there is no power but Allah. There is no Raziq but Allah. There is no Khaliq but Allah. There is no sustainer but Allah. There is no one that can nourish me but Allah. There is no one that can help me but Allah. There is no one that can protect me but Allah. The Prophet told Ibn Abbas, Ya Bunayya, Wala wishta ma'an nasu ala an yanfa'uka bi shay'in, lam yanfa'uka illa bima qad katabahu Allahu lak. Oh my blessed son, if the entire world was to gather together to give you one benefit, just benefit you in one way. O oh, Ibn Abbas, they will not be able to benefit you if Allah has not written it for you. And the opposite is also true. So if I know that it's Allah that benefits me and not my car or not my family, then I would rather, I would make sure that I don't compromise the orders of Allah, even if that means that I have to compromise the orders of different people. I can compromise the request of my spouse, but I cannot compromise the request of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, one of my teachers would say, what is the difference between what is the difference between a king and a khalifa? A king and a khalifa, a malik and a khalifa. They're both used historically in Islam. He said that a king is a person who would be who would, if needed, be prepared to ignore a command of Allah but to protect his kingdom. His kingdom is primary. But a Khalifa would rather allow the kingdom to be broken, but not let the command of Allah to be broken. And Allah he Allah Allah this from Allah Abu Bakr Allah. Allah. where he said, I don't care who they are, if they don't give me zakat, it's game over, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, it's much bigger than just like, oh, it's only Allah. The idea is that if I'm struggling, there's a quote of Hassan al that I was reading where he was saying when a person is struggling with something and he says, La ilaha illallah, he or she will come to the realization that that struggle is either from Allah as a test or either through that statement of his or hers, Allah will bring them help. La ilaha illallah. He Allah says, Allah. It's a source Allah. of raha. La ilaha illallah is a source of nusra. La ilaha illallah is a source of risk. I mean, it's a source of everything, Shaykh. So, I mean, like, I feel like when the Prophet said, Afdal al la ilaha illallah, it was pretty, it was, it was an obvious one. Like, this is it, man. Shaykh, one of my favorite hadith, and I'll end after this. One of my favorite hadith about la ilaha illallah, you know, as TJs, right? We have a lot of these hadith about la ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> you know, the tablighi jama'ah, right? He enters into a town, says la ilaha illallah, and the whole town accepts Islam. That's, that's what it, happens, man. bro. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. Your beard looks dark today, man. You, it was a man on? What's going on? No, not at all, bro. I, I just shortened it, right? I, I got a haircut because all the white hairs were really sticking out at oh, the bottom. But you look young, mashallah. You look young, Allah man. Allah 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 but nonetheless, you know, that one time the Prophet was 
in, in a garden, Abu Huraira came to him and he was looking for him. And he found he found the Prophet in the garden and the Prophet was smiling. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, what are you smiling for? And he said that I just been told by Jibreel alayhi salam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him that whoever says the kalima man qala la ilaha illa mukhlisan fi min qalbihi dakhala al-jannah or kama qala whoever says the kalima will enter jannah. So Abu Huraira gets really happy. He's like, really Ya Rasulullah? Yes. He's like, yes. So can I, you know, can I tell the people about it? He said, go ahead, tell people. And he leaves the garden. And as he's walking to inform people, the first person he bumps into is Umar radiallahu anhu. And Umar says, what, 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 why are you like running all excited for what's going on? You know, he says, you know, <laughs> he's like, I got this hadith like from the Prophet He said, like, which hadith? He said that whoever says the kalima will enter Jannah. That's all they need. And Umar radiallahu anhu actually, he got a little upset and he, he told him, be quiet, man. That's not true. And he kind of, you know, you know, kind of, you know, pushed him a little bit out of love, you know. And then he took Abu Huraira to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, this guy is saying that whoever says the kalima will enter Jannah. And the Prophet says, he's right, he's not lying. It's true. So Umar radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, please don't tell people this hadith. Then everyone will start just, you know, relying upon this. So like, it's, it's a reality that we're blessed with the kalima. And the more we say it, the more our heart will accept it. And the more our heart accepts it, the more it will play a role in our decisions. If we're not saying it, the Prophet said that everyone should, should be saying the kalima at least 100 times a day. La ilaha illallah. And if we say 100 times a day, our heartbeat will also connect with this kalima. You know, and then, I mean, there's many narrations about this, Sheikh, but I don't, sorry to cut you off, but I just these thoughts that were crossing my mind while you were speaking. Uh, but you were saying number four, like what else comes from, from saying the kalima? Sheikh, have you, ever come to a, have you ever come at a point where Something is about to happen. You're in, a, you know, airplane with turbulence or a, a difficult situation, and you start saying the kalima. Has that ever happened to you? I think a lot, a lot of times, man. Like <laughs> it's um, when you, when you think about the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that man kana akhir kalamihi la ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah dakhal al jannah that whoever's last statements in this life are la ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah or la ilaha illallah will be entered into paradise. You know, that's something you realize that you need to train your soul for, right? Mm. That as human beings, we have a natural reaction when calamity strikes to, to turn towards something, to say something like, oh my God, or oh, whatever. Like the reaction of the believer needs to be to say, la ilaha illallah, because you never know when that last moment is for you. So I, I think one of the things that one of our, our, our teachers tried to give tarbiyah to us in was that very fact that train your nafs that any time you're going through some sort of calamity, or even when you're stalked or, or, or shocked or astonished, you know, just say la ilaha illallah to, to train your nafs to do that. So I, I think this is like an important tarbiyah that we, we need to do for ourselves, for our children, for you know anyone that we care for. That that's how you get uh, that those last words to be la ilaha illallah is that you prepare yourself for it. But you know, subhanallah, when you're sharing the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, there's a very similar version of it in, in Sahih al Bukhari as well. When he asks the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, man asad al nas bi shafatik. That mm. Almost of Allah, who are the most fortunate people to have your intercession? And he said, Man qala la ilaha illallah, khalisan bi qalbi. That whoever says la ilaha illallah sincerely uh, from their heart. And I think if you combine both hadiths together, it's such a powerful meaning that we the, the statement of la ilaha illallah is a perfect statement. But we as human beings are not perfect and we're deficient. So in our deficiency, we may not live up to that statement. But mm. even if we don't live up to that statement, how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that as long as we were sincere in trying to live up into it, then we get the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I think that was a reflection that I had exactly. in what you were saying. It's awesome. Sheikh, the hadith of Abu, Abu Dhar, where you want to share that with us, the Abu Dhar hadith where the Prophet said, same hadith, where he says, whoever says the kalima will be forgiven, it will enter Jannah. And Abu Dhar says what? Uh, you know, in zana wa in saraqa ya Rasulullah, that even if they commit these major sins of adultery or they steal or they rob even if they do that they'll be forgiven or they'll go to Jannah the Prophet said Na'am in zana wa in sarak. and he said it three times Abu Dhar couldn't believe it like no ya Rasulullah that's just too, that's too much man like even if they commit all of these sins saying the kalima will be an expiation for them and the Prophet said yes and then after he asked three times he said you know ala raghmi anfi Abu Dhar He's like, Allah even Allah. if Abu Dhar doesn't like it, this is the way it is. Like, you know, who cares Allah about Allah. it? doesn't matter what you think, Abu I mean, of course, you're a great yeah. Sahaba, and I understand where you're coming from, and you're coming from a very good place. But the reality is that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the power 
in this kalima, right? And for all of us, you know, a lot of times we always think about, you know, what is that special thing that I can do? That special thing that that scholar has said, you know, that's unique for me. Like sometimes it doesn't have to be special. It's the little things in life that make great people. It's not the great things that make great. It's the little things like punctuality, dedication, and so on and so forth. The little things. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the sign of a believer is when the name of Allah is mentioned, his heart, his heart shakes out of, out of fear and happiness. Like, yes, Allah's name. It's like a loved one when they hear their beloved's name. Like, oh yes, I know that person. وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ There's a beautiful connection, right? So if we say it more in our homes, it will bring more love for Allah in our hearts. And Mu'adh bin Jabr radiallahu anhu had a very different, um, you know, sunnah for this, different perspective, where he would actually not only say the kalima, he would actually speak about the kalima, right? Where the sahabas actually complained to the Prophet ﷺ that every time we're walking in the masjid, he comes to us and he says, Ijlis ma'ana nu'min bisa'a. Come sit down, let's talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's talk about Allah. If we were to ask our children today, like, and if I was to ask, you know, our nephews and nieces, like, let's talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a few minutes. How much do we have? Right? And this is the greatest. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no one better than Him. But few sentences and we end. Because speaking about Allah has become difficult for us. If speaking about Him has become difficult for us, then accepting the kalima is also difficult for us. In order for, in order for us to be able to accept the kalima and let it, let it truly live in the veins of our bodies, we must learn how to speak about it more and more and say the kalima as much as, as much as we possibly can. You know, Shaykh, our father, you know, whenever, whenever, you know, at nighttime, whatever it was, he would make sure we speak about this. Just the greatness of Allah and say the kalima as much as possible because it left a mark. And I'm sure, uh, you know, till today, it, you know, it has, an, it, has, it has a benefit. You know, once um, we were having um, this you know, interview for our school, for our, our full-time school, and you ask these kids, this is a few years back, and I asked this, student who was a potential student he didn't get accepted no maybe he did he, he, <laughs> like, okay you know how many uh, you know how many sahabas do you know and he's like uh you know I, 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 he said like one and after that he made up he said salahuddin ayyubi's name <laughs> i was like at least you know salahuddin ayyubi's name is great you know and he was 14 years old he wasn't a kid he was 14 years old right and then i said okay you know what can you name me some 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 um uh, Marvel, uh, you know, uh, characters and some DC comic characters. This is guy. He just started going off, you know, like Thor, Hulk, boom, boom. Some, I mean, some of them I knew. Some of them I didn't even know. I was taking notes. Shit, I'm like, man, this guy really knows. <laughs> he knows his stuff. And it's because it's being shown to him, right? It's being shown to him. So if we show our children by speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatness of Allah, they'll start learning these people's names, right? And it has an effect. It definitely has an effect, Shaykh. Anything else, Shaykh, you want to add to just the afdul of dhikri la ilaha Allah? Like, just quickly. I have words, bro. Like I said, I can go on. But I think one more point I want to highlight again, just this concept of how la ilaha illallah is the greatest form of forgiveness for sins, even subhanAllah. Um, we have the famous hadith al-bitaqa where a man comes with 99 scrolls of sins. And each scroll is as far as the eye can see from east to west, as far as the eye can see. And this man thinks he's destroyed. He thinks he's done for. There's no way I'm getting out of this situation. But then a card is brought and it is weighed on the other side. And that card outweighs all 99 scrolls of sins, subhanAllah. And that card, all it said was la ilaha illallah. Right? And this shows you the weight of it and how it's with the best form of forgiveness. So to emphasize your point of, you know, going back to the basics, like just mm -hmm. be that basic Muslim that has perfected his tawheed, perfected his la ilaha illallah, and that will save you. That will mm -hmm. save you in this life uh, and the next. Shaykh, um, like, no, we, we, can, we, can jump, we can jump to the, the alhamdulillah part as well. But, you know, Shaykh, if you do in your house, I want everyone to start doing it in their home. There's a beautiful narration that I, I was reading from Abu Harir radiallahu anhu, where he said that, he said that the people of the heaven, just like how we look up and see the stars in the sky and, you know, are, are, are like, wow, marveled by the beautiful stars and take guidance from the beautiful stars. Abu anhu says that the Prophet told him that the angels in the sky look down at the homes 
in which the dhikr of Allah takes place. And those homes are lit up, are lit up. And they look at those homes and they take you know, pride and they, see, and they see the beauty of those homes. And one narration Allah comes, Yubahi bihil malaika. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes pride in those homes in which the dhikr of Allah is happening in front of the angels. So I find that, wow. like imagine, like right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying our names to the angels. Like, yeah, these guys are speaking about me. And you used to say that they won't worship me. They won't speak about me. They won't talk about me. They're doing it right now. So that's a that's a very fulfilling feeling. It doesn't matter how many times you speak about Elon Musk or LeBron James, these dudes will never mention our name. Even by accident, they won't say it. If they say it, they'll say it, they'll say it wrong, right? Uh, so the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying our names, it's, it's a very powerful feeling, right? And I feel like we should all be like the, the beautiful hadith, and I'll say quite after this, where the Prophet came to Ubay ibn Ka'ab and he said, Iqra alayya. You know, and Ubay ibn Ka'ab said, Aqra alayka wa anta tunzal. Like, you want me to read Quran to you whilst the Quran was revealed upon you? And, Ubay, and the Prophet said, Inna Allah amaruni an asma'a mink. Allah has ordered me to listen to the Quran from you. Right? Oh, and Ubayy ibn Kaab stops for a second and he says, Asamani Allah? Are you serious? Allah said my name? No, man. No way. Allah said my name? And the Prophet says, Samaka Allah. Allah said your name because you are a person that remembers Allah. So Allah remembers you. And he just started to cry. Allah. Like this is happening to us right now. Afdalu dhikri. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Shaykh, I'm not sure I, I think we, we took we took care of this aspect Hopefully we can speak about the next aspect For the next 20 minutes inshallah Afdulul dua alhamdulillah Sure, bismillah Without a, a shadow of a doubt So uh, about the second part of the hadith The scholars differed on What is the best form of dua Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar <laughs> We should start singing Tala al-Badr alayna I told Mufti Doha, please excuse me for tonight. But when I when I saw the flyer with your name on it, I, I just this was I couldn't miss the opportunity. Jazakumullah khairan for, for gracing us with your presence, Sheikh. Always a pleasure, much yeah, How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Bijan, you got that green color today? You know, I'm I'm in, the, I'm in the religious feeling. <laughs> The no. comedy is back, man. The comedy is back. Yeah, you can't you can't have a session without Sheikh Abdullah's comedy, man. Well, see, the green color reminds me of the green dome, and it gets me closer to the Prophet. Oh, 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 it makes you feel a certain way. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, man. Alhamdulillah, very good, Sheikh. How are you? Are you in Calgary? I am in Calgary. Yes. How's, yes. how's your mom? Everyone's well. Alhamdulillah. 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 Everyone's good, man. Alhamdulillah. Imagine in Calgary, they, in the masjid, they can only have ten people. Uh, 15 people. Yeah, 15, 15 people. people yeah. So that, that's what's happening over there, unfortunately. Yeah, and man. SubhanAllah. Things are getting tough. But may Allah make it easy. Yeah. I mean, Sheikh Naveed, I mean, you already introduced him, but Sheikh Naveed, he's always smiling, mashallah. And he always yeah. keeps smiling. May Allah bless you, Sheikh Naveed. Thank Amen. you. For Amen. Just, I'm going to just sit back and listen to you guys. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Tayyip, no problem, Sheikh. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, so we're speaking about the second part of the hadith. Where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Wa du'a alhamdulillah." So the best form of du'a is to say alhamdulillah. Now let's firstly start off with du'a. The scholars divided du'a into two categories, where they said there is du'a talab and du'a ibadah. So du'a talab is when you're asking Allah subhanahu wa taala for something, and du'a ibadah is to call out to Allah for the sake of worshiping Him. Mm. Now, based upon your interpretation of what this hadith is referring to, the scholars went in one of two ways. So those scholars that said that the du'a over here is referring to du'a al-ibadah, they said that it is just a statement of alhamdulillah, that alhamdulillah is the best form of du'a. Why? Because it is developing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is only the select slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will truly be, grat uh, will be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Interestingly enough, they tied in du'a talab into this, the du'a of requesting and asking. And they said that if you look again at the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La in shakartum la azidannakum, that if you were to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will give you more. They said that if you, the best way of making shukr is to say alhamdulillah. We have the hadith in Sunnah Tirmidhi that whoever says alhamdulillah has returned more than he was given. Has Allah returned Allah. more than he was given, right? So this is one part of it. The second group of scholars, they said that this hadith is referring to dua of talab, that this is dua of re requesting. And they said alhamdulillah over here, actually is short for alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen meaning surah al-fatiha 
and the best dua is ihdina sirat al mustaqim and that is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was referring to and this is a, a, a minority opinion but i don't think they're mutually exclusive right when we're referring to dua al-ibadah at verse alhamdulillah when we're referring to dua uh, al-talab is referring to surah al-fatiha and they're both encompassing and inclusive uh, inclusive of one another the last thing i'll mention over here and we can begin our, our discussion is that when you look at the statement of alhamdulillah people confuse it with shukr they confuse hamd with shukr and there's a very distinguishing factor between hamd and shukr shukr is usually a result of a of a of an action someone does something to you someone says something nice to you you do shukr for that right mm -hmm. uh, so allah gives you something you do shukr of it by utilizing it in a halal way and thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it hamd is to praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his beautiful names and his lofty attributes and his greatness. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that greatness, for his existence uh, itself. So when we're talking about alhamdulillah, it shouldn't be you know conflated with shukr. Alhamd is much greater than shukr. It is for who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And a part of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is our razak and al manan and al-wahab and the one that gives us so much. Um, so the shukr ties into it and is a, a, a more specific category of the hamd. But Jen, what, what do you think about the, the, the just alhamdulillah? How does that? How does that? Zim of the Don't pretend like I know something and I can say something. Come on, Bajan, don't act like. <laughs> you, know, he has, he has, you know, he has all humble in front yes, of the screen. You, you have. A workshop on Surah Fatiha for like a few hours, Mufti Duhab. Yeah, so you can watch that. I mean, you can watch the whole, you show the, the workshop separately, but I feel like. Is, is, it, is that workshop on the portal? It's on the portal, yes, on the portal. It's not portal? Let me put the book. Keep it the Miftah portal. <laughs> <laughs> because that, that Miftah portal has Mufti Duhab Surah Fatiha workshop. And I learned so much from it, and I'm sure someone, if someone watches it, they'll get the whole comp, the whole co uh, concept of Surah Alhamd, which is the beginning Surah Fatiha, Surah Alhamd. He's right, uh, Sheikh Navid is 100% right. People confuse themselves with shukr and hamd, mm -hmm. you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you're praising him and you're, and you're thanking him in one word. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also the simplicity, you know, like in the, in, the, in the simplicity of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes, you know, you, uh, Shay does so much for someone, does so much for me. I'm like, there's no way I can thank him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the biggest... Uh, Allah, we have received our greatest favorite favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the most benevolent. He's, he's the most merciful. He's the most generous. And we, we, we can't ever repay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, since I've given you the most, also I've given you the simplest way to thank me. Mm -hmm. I just alhamdulillah. You know, just said alhamdulillah. So it's like, it's not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to give all of our wealth, but just appreciate it. Appreciation is so important. This is what we say. When we start our salah, when we, um, it's, you know, imagine praying that salah. Um, and I always talked about this in my speech in the ascension of the believer class. Imagine praying a salah after losing a loved one and then saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Hmm. You know, like that Alhamdulillah is far different than the Alhamdulillah that you've been saying every single day. So that's really powerful, what Shaykh Naveed said. It's, it's really, it's like we have to internalize it in the sense that. Like, oh, praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We the Prophet said it so much. You know, the Prophet said it over Allah he praised, he thanked Allah so much. He's like, the way the Prophet ﷺ, like, there's no way we can thank you. Like, I don't know where to start from. Allah is saying, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Afdalu dua, alhamdulillah. And we, Allah, Allah knows, am I echoing? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, we only praise to gain more. He knows our nature. We're so, we're always in need of more, you know, this human always wants more, this human. So Allah says, okay, okay, every time you praise me, I'll give you. Just Allah thank Akbar. Allah. But Jen, like the word Alhamdulillah specifically, that was deep, but Jen, I mean, mashallah, Allah rewards you. But the word Alhamdulillah specifically, it's as if it's the first of everything. Like when you think about the word Alhamdulillah, it was 
the first word that was said by our father Adam alayhi salam, right? According to the narration, mm. when 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 um when he was when he was created and he sneezed, Allah taught him an Allama Adam al Asma. One of the first things that Mufassirun say is that Allah taught him how to say Alhamdulillah. Do you know how to sneeze? I try to sometimes. I, I taught him how to sneeze when he was young. Like, you know, <laughs> not, you know, you know, you know, put your sleep. Sometimes, you know, in COVID, you have to be a little extra careful. So I'm, I've been a little weird. careful. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to ask you that. Yeah, so the, so he, the first thing that the first thing that a human being ever said, right? Imagine like, you know, if someone tells you that if you want to get into this job interview, do what I did. All the first thing I said was I said hello like this, and I talked to him like this. This is the first sentence, you know, the first impression. I said these things. So say these things. The first thing Adam alayhi salam said was Alhamdulillah. Huh. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the Fatiha. And the first thing he teaches us is if you want to introduce me to the world, first learn how to praise me. Alhamdulillah. Right? And al-jama'a bayna shukri wal thana. Like it's a combination of praising Allah and thanking Allah. Sometimes in our life, Allah has given us something. We're blessed with a child, we're blessed with a new car, we're blessed with a new job. We say, Alhamdulillah, this is shukr. And sometimes we're not blessed with something, but rather something is taken from us. We say, Alhamdulillah, by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah didn't say, Ashukru lillah, wa almadhu lillah, Alhamdulillah. Right? And this is an introduction to the world. That if you want to, if you want to be around me and benefit from me, Alhamdulillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say Alhamdulillah Rahman, Alhamdulillah Aziz, Alhamdulillah Wahab. Allah said Alhamdulillah. That all praise and gratitude is not to me simply because I'm merciful or simply because I'm giving or simply oh. because I'm uh, you know, giving you gifts or because I'm being merciful towards you. No, no. All praise and gratitude is inclusive to me and it's exclusively for me. Because of all of my qualities. So I don't have to be merciful to you at this moment for you to praise me. I can be Aziz and you still have to say Alhamdulillah. I can be I can be Sabur and you still have to say Alhamdulillah. Allah. So for all of the qualities. But the quality that we're mostly thanking Allah for is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Right? So Allah said Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So first in the Quran is Alhamdulillah. And even at all, you know, sometimes someone can say, how am I really praising Allah when I'm praising someone else? I'm praising Sheikh Naveed, right? I'm praising Sheikh Abdullah. How am I praising Allah? It's a very simple answer. You don't, you don't, you're not praising the painting, you're, pa you're praising the artist. You're not praising the child, you're praising the father and the mother, right? You're praising Allah even when we're praising other people. So Alhamdulillah. The first thing that we will say when we enter into Jannah, First thing that will be said, all first, first human being, Salat, you know, uh, Quran. The first thing that a human will say when they enter into Jannah. The first thing that will be said to them is, Salamun alaykum tibatum. Peace be upon you. Go chill, right? And the first thing we will say is, Ooh, Alhamdulillah, alladhi sadaqana wa'da. All praises for Allah that he was truthful to his promise, man. He didn't shortcut us. He didn't give us a half check. Alhamdulillah. So I got, I got, I got, a, lot of, I got a lot of those half checks, man. It's painful. <laughs> oh, I know that feel half check hit me told you. <laughs> I was uh, I mean, not that. For, for, for us, for me, a half check is enough too, man. We'll make it work. Alhamdulillah. We'll make it work, man. But, should, but, I, I have a hard time seeing Sheikh Naveed silent. I'm so sorry, Sheikh Naveed. Yeah, cool. No, no, no. no. Well, like, I'm having a great time. This, this is great. And you know, Spana, one of the things that I'm really enjoying uh, right now is there's the different perspectives that everyone brings, man. You know, uh, Mufti Abdul Wahab, told me the hadith we were going to be covering today. So I had gathered my thoughts. And Allahu Akbar, it's amazing that when you gather uh, around the people of knowledge, they, they expand your horizons, man. Everyone has a different you perspective. Us, Come on, uh, I, I, I'm loving that perspective. Nothing, man. You're, the, you're the real deal right now. We're, we're just, Not a, bro. Before, we, before we go ahead, I, I want to speak to my audiences there. Um, you have Mufti Saab fanboy, but I also want to teach you guys some adab of the Miftah live. <laughs> And the other Miftah live should be that whenever we have a guest, we should have <laughs> we should have a fanboy, you know, or, or for the for the guest. So we need Sheikh David fanboy. No, and the one we need other Sheikh fan. So just change it up a little bit. So you know, then, yeah. <laughs> sure, we, we spread the love. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You know, earlier on, uh, I, I can't remember when 
there's a, another one for Mufti Abdurrahman. And I'm, Mufti Abdurrahman is not even here today. <laughs> and he has a bad point. That's, you know, when you reach the status of the awliya, that your fans are there even when you're not present. <laughs> 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 Allahu Akbar. Yeah, Allahu Akbar. You're awesome, man. Oh, but okay. like, well, it's the, the, like, inshallah, we have a few more minutes. But that, for me, that that's the only thing I was thinking about when I thought, well, Alhamdulillah, was it's always the first of everything. It's the first thing you say when you wake up in the morning. It's the first thing you say when you eat. It's the first thing you say when you finish eating. It's the first of everything, right? That's mm-hmm. that's where what, what what comes to my mind. I, I mean, my limited scope. Barakallahu <sighs> Um I, I think I'll only add two more things to this. Number one is the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When he saw something that he liked, he would say, Alhamdulillah, bi ni'matihi titimu salihat. When he saw something that he didn't like, he would say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Wow. So a way to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every circumstance, I think that is something that, that you know, develops a sense of optimism in, in us. That no matter what's happening in your life, you have to find a way to recognize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's really beautiful is that when you recognize the perfection and greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us um, in the hadith of uh, Abu Malik al-Harith ibn Asim al-Ash'ari, walhamdulillah tamla'ul mizan, that hmm. the statement of alhamdulillah, it fills the scales, right? So can you imagine your scales on the Day of Judgment being filled just to saying the statement and recognizing the greatness of the statement, alhamdulillah. But I think the more one increases in that statement, definitely the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases you, in khair, in goodness, in every positive quality. That last hadith of Bukhari, same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, subhanAllah wa bihamdihi, subhanAllah al Can you tell us the last hadith, please? So the, the last hadith. Read the Bukhari, 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 Bukhari khatam, Bukhari khatam here. SubhanAllah, you know, I, I really want to do one of those maqra'as where like over a period of like, you know, seven weekends, we, we do a khatam. Sheikh, man, you I would know, love you, to do you, that. You, you, you have the students in the audience for it, Miftah. Just let me know when you're ready. Let's do Shama'il first, and then after Shama'il, we'll go for Bukhari, inshallah. Good, inshallah, inshallah. So the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu. And this is it's truly amazing. Like, you know, I love the genius of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. That's exactly, that's exactly what I wanted you to say. You caught oh, wow. it out of my mouth. So. <laughs> I, I, Allahu alam. I'm, it's, you know, this is inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know, praise you to him. You look at the very first hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, innama al-a'malu bin niyat. It's about the human being and them rectifying their intentions. And then the very last hadith, and it's amazing that first cha- uh, chapter is uh, Kitab al Wahi, and then the last chapter is Kitab al Tawheed. And the very last hadith of Kitab al Tawheed uh, from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he tells us, Kalima tani habiba tani ila rahman, thaqila tani fil mizan, khafifa tani ala lisan, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanallahi al azim, or kama kala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he narrates that there are two statements that are beloved to Ar Rahman. They are heavy upon the scales, yet they are light upon the tongue. And they are to say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al You know, glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of his praises. And glory be to Allah in his greatness and his magnificence. Um, so when you look at this hadith, this hadith is purely about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's as if Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he starts off by the, his collection by saying, you know, inshallah, my intention is sincere and I'm going to try my best to put this compilation together. And then he concludes it with that I put my best foot forward and now mm. all praise is due to Allah. It is up to Allah to accept, right? Um, and this was from, from the genius of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, that, you know, there's these like hidden codes that Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, has put in. That's the beauty of his book. Beautiful. Allahu Akbar. I'm telling you, like, you know, anyone, layman or scholar can read Imam al-Bukhari and derive something different. But it's truly those that have dedicated their lives to studying Sahih al-Bukhari that will continue to find gems upon gem uh, throughout the book. Rahimahullah wa rahmatan wa So, Bajan, I think that we, you know, we can just conclude at this if you, if you th- if anything else to add. But I mean, I want to just maybe just be for a few more minutes, man. Barakallahu fiqo. No, please, I would, I would love for you. Sheikh, like Sheikh, to... but but outside of alhamd, the word alhamdulillah, what it's really telling us is also to be grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? So if maybe you can share some thoughts on gratitude and why in these few nights that are left, um, you know, the purpose of standing in tahajjud is not all the time to seek forgiveness. The Prophet sat all, stood up all night and he said, أَفَلَا أَكُنَ عَبْدًا شُكُورًا It's to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So maybe you can share some thoughts on that as well. Why, why it's important that even in difficult times like this, we can, you know, 
pluck up the courage and ability to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You know, when you look at the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companion actually asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that why do you continue to pray when Allah has forgiven your past sins and your future mm-hmm. sins? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam completely reframes the question with his answer. So let us understand the question. The, the questioner is coming from the perspective of, of punishment that, you know, if Allah has forgiven you for your mm-hmm. sins, you know, that's why you're praying, right? You're afraid of falling short. You're afraid of having committing a sin. And that is why you pray for so long. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is saying, no, that's not why I'm praying. It's as if they're saying that, you know, there's even different levels to prayers that people pray, you know, salah to, to seek forgiveness for their sins. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wasn't hu- human like us. He was a, a Nabi, a, a Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah had forgiven his sins already. So he was already at a level where he doesn't even need to address that issue. So he's starting off from a place of shukr automatically. That I, should I not be a, a grateful slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praying to him. That the fact that he's forgiven for me all my sins. That he's made me a prophet of, of Allah. That he's guided me to pray Qiyamah, Layl and Tahajjud. Like all of these deeper inner meanings are coming out of the answer of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this shows us that how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaks such a few words, yet there's so many encompassing meanings behind it. And this is such a, a valuable lesson that when you worship Allah subhanahu wa taala, sometimes you approach it from a place of fear, sometimes you approach it from a place of love, and then sometimes when you reach that highest level, like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did. You approach it from a place of gratitude because you recognize that had it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you wouldn't have been able to worship him. And it's, I think that ties in perfectly to the introduction of la ilaha illallah, that if you recognize the value of la ilaha illallah, you can't help but say alhamdulillah that Allah guided you to it. And this is the you know the famous statement of Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah, that for every blessing of Allah that you recognize and you say alhamdulillah for, another alhamdulillah is due because you couldn't have thanked Allah without Allah guiding you to it. Wow. 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 wow, the fact that you said Abdul Dikri Lai Allah or Abdul Dua Alhamdulillah. The greatest dhikr is La ilaha illallah. And if you're able to say that, you should also just say Alhamdulillah and be grateful to Allah wow. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. That's beautiful. That's, that's, that's beautiful. awesome, man. And, not, not, and, and I would say just not everyone needs to be saying it. In, in your household, if not everyone is doing it, it's fine. Even if you're doing it, it's enough. I always give the example that not everyone works in the house. Sometimes only one or two providers, but everyone in the home eats. Right? If there's one or two of us that decide to take that responsibility, there's a, there's a statement of Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah that he says, Allah. He says that at the end of time, there will be, there will be a time where in an entire gathering, in an entire house, there's only one person that's praising Allah. There's only one person that's saying Alhamdulillah. Only one person. No one else is doing it. One person is doing it sincerely. And by that one person doing it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the needs of everyone in that gathering. Oh. Right? So not everyone needs to be doing it equally. If we take the responsibility, inshallah, you know, Ayatul Kursi, third, three times, 40 houses benefit, right? That's the benefit of beautiful and, 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 and pious neighbors, righteous neighbors. So if we do it, hopefully the whole house will benefit and everyone can take something from it, inshallah ta'ala. But Jen, uh, let's call it a night, man. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying. I can't believe you brought Sheikh Nabi on all of them, Calgary, man. That's amazing. <laughs> Whenever we have programs, we gotta bring Sheikh Nabi man. You, you, you know, like Subhanallah, the, the the one of the signs of a believer is that they're they're generous with their praises and and, and their their words uh, towards their guests. And also, I, I feel that uh, whenever I'm with you guys, may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you guys in this life and the next and grant you all the best of this life and the next. The thing is, you know, I, I only praise people because I'm so, I'm so, I feel so good when people praise me. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Like, There's so much noor on your face, Sheikh. So I guess much noor. Allahu Akbar. Like, There's so much noor, you turned your room green. Allahu yes. Akbar. <laughs> no, the green is from the noor of my heart. Exactly. Like, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The thing is like, you know, people don't realize like, you know, people get affected when they get praised, you know? Like, I get affected. I don't know about you. Like, when someone says to me, you know, or something like that, I get, I get excited, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know? But no no praise, no, like, no exaggerated praise. But honestly, you're one of those teachers that when they ever, when you ever speak, teach in our Miftah programs, and the service, everybody is just excited and, and, and so honored. And they, they learn so much. You're very thorough. You're, um, so alhamdulillah, it's so special to have you. 
more, more than the teaching and educating part, Sheikh Khalid. What's your plan, man? You guys going to finish this year? Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us, Akhi. I made the niya, and uh, after Ramadan, start working out and start training. And uh, if it happens physically, alhamdulillah, if it doesn't, then Allah honors our intentions, right? Allah honors Amen. our intentions. Yeah, Hilal Hajj called me, you know, Allah and I'm like, I'm like, what Hajj package are you trying to offer me? He said, uh -huh. no, no. And I said, what, 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 what's Sheikh Omar going on? He told me about Sheikh Omar. I'm like, ah, that, I, I need the five-star Hajj, buddy. You know? Of course. Of <laughs> course. You know, salam people, Sheikh. Yeah. He's, we, he's, need, we need no. That's because people like you and I, Mufti Abdul Hab, we need a place to go hang out after we do our talaf, <laughs> right? If he joins us, where are we gonna go? Hang out? Where are we gonna go? <laughs> and this is like when people get to the higher levels of Jannah, we depend upon those higher levels of Jannah to to, to drag us up with them. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. No, no, he, he, he expected me to say, yeah, you know, I can walk three miles, four miles. I was like, uh, I don't know about that. Like. He's like, fine, we'll, we'll create a special package just for you. I was like, all right, figure it out. Allah, Allah, Allah. Allah, take us. May Allah take us. We really miss. Amen, ya Rab. Amen. We really miss. I, I, I'm right now, I'm at this point, I, I'm ready to go and stay anywhere in Makkah. I'm just joking around. You know, like, <laughs> I'm just take me there and just, I'm so happy to be around, um, be around the Kaaba in the, in the, in the gardens around the Prophet's grave and the, the shade of the Prophet's masjid. It's such an honor. And this is hard. This is, this is, our memories with Sheikh Navid is in Makkah Mukarrama, and these these memories just whenever I see Sheikh Navid, I go back to those locations. That's why I asked you the Hajj question, and inshallah, may Allah SWT keep my memories fond like this, and may Allah SWT make these memories come true when we're around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we'll do all these things again, inshallah. Inshallah, Zakallah Khair, Bajan. Zakhla Khish Sheikh for giving us your time and late at night. I lost. What time is it there, Sheikh? Is it 9 55? No, it's 10 55. 10 55. Okay, so it's two hours. Oh, good. Okay. So you can stay for a few more minutes. Miftah, of Miftah. Course. I have as much time for you as you want, inshallah. You, you brought Miftah online. What's Miftah? Sure, I, just, I just want to tell everyone that, inshallah, like as Ramadan is coming to an end, Ramadan immersion is coming to an end, people are asking what's next. Uh, inshallah, we have the summer program already scheduled and, 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 and it's ready. If people are already registering for it. Um, now we've made it in such a way that you can choose which classes you want to register for. So if you want, if you don't want to register for all three classes, you can choose one or choose two. Um, so I would, I would encourage everyone to just right now, if you have time, to open the Miftah Online's website, the summer semester. Try to pick a few courses to register for. So inshallah, you can continue to benefit from the Miftah programs even after the month of Ramadan. And we also are having the Arabic intensive, which is on June 17th, right? So it's a five-day intensive. Um, please check that out as well on our website. I mean, the courses are not only for Ramadan. Actually, in Ramadan we actually take we take a step back in our courses. Our courses are actually outside throughout the entire year, and everything has a starting point and ending point. It has a curriculum, so please check it out, inshallah. And if you if you all encouraged and in, 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 inshallah are, 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 um, are motivated to join, please join right away and spread the word, inshallah. Ta'ala. Everybody, keep us your keep us your du'as. Keep keep Sheikh Naveed. His family and your du'as. We want to thank Sheikh Naveed for joining us from all over Calgary. May Allah bless you. May Allah protect you, Sheikh Naveed. Can't wait to see you in person again. I mean, all of you as well. Jazakum Allah khair. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam.